right, hi, so it's Anthony, and as promised, this is the second half of the design project where we go over sort of how to test the capacitance of our uh, capacitor, right? So remember, if you recall correctly, we have our design here with our traces that you can sort of see it's kind of backlit, but this is the plate that we designed very early on, and uh, we're going to now go over the capacitance values for this capacitor. Right, so this is the circuit that we're using to measure our capacitance. Um, you'll notice that the lighting has changed a little bit, or will have changed a little bit. I'm recording this a little bit later, uh, just because there were some changes that we had to make. So the first thing is, we're no longer using the method that we presented before. So you can see here we have our resistors, and the, there's there's more on my desk on the side here. So there's a 220, there's a 100K, here's a 4 mega ohm resistor. Uh, and we were doing this because our capacitance is actually so small that we couldn't get a noticeable time delay. So we've changed methods. We're going to now use internal pull up and pull uh, pull up resistors and capacitors from the Arduino itself. And that's going to let us measure capacitance in a slightly different way, um, which I'll, I'll talk about more in, in the PowerPoint later. But we can show you how the circuit works. So we can measure our capacitance. So this one here is a 6.2 picofarad capacitor, and we have our two red and green traces running from the analog inputs on our board. One of them is supplying power, and one of them is reading voltage. So we can see that we're reading of a, uh, around seven picofarads of, of capacitance. And that, that changes and fluctuates a bit right now just because I'm playing with wires and stuff. But we can also so show that the capacitance on a one no wait, that's how much is it? 110 microfarads? It should be 10 microfarad capacitor is also uh, going to read around 10 microfarads. And I've done my best to calibrate the circuit. So what you're seeing here is the results of having a semi-calibrated circuit. So there are some changes and fluctuations in the capacitance, obviously, but this is sort of the best we can get for uh, our values because there's tolerances within capacitors and we don't actually know the value of the capacitance inside here. And um, yeah, so that's just what it is. But I'll talk more about it later, but we can we can now move our traces onto our custom PCB. So now we're connected here and I know the colors are flipped, but we'll just have to live with it. And you can see that we're reading capacitance of around 5.86 or six picofarads rod, depending on whether we calibrate for small capacitances or lower or high capacitances. Uh, so something around there. Now I have this square of water. You can see it's not completely full, but it's a container of water. And I have my capacitor. So if I place the water over the capacitor, we will see a change in capacitance. And that's exactly what we wanted to see. And it means that we're good to keep continuing with our circuit design. So once again, take off the water. Capacitance goes down, put on the water, capacitance goes up. And I have some more calibration to do with the circuit. Uh, this is just a preliminary calibration. So the results that you see in the second half may not correspond exactly with this one, but this is just to show you that the circuit works and to sort of walk you through uh, the design of the circuit. Okay, so this is the demonstration now of the high sensitivity analysis with internal pull up and down resistors. So once again, we'll just show you that if we use, let's say, a 10 uh, microfarad capacitor, we have a reading. If I can plug them into the right pins on the breadboard. Uh, so we're reading a little bit above uh, the expected value still, but that's OK, and it's not too big of an issue. Um, because again, this is just a prototype. So now if we bring this back to our PCB that we designed here, we can see that we have uh, some degree of capacitance reading. And this output is also coming out to my computer. So I'll be able to give somewhat of a kind of graph later. So now this is a piece of acrylic. Uh, unfortunately, it's not super clear because I had to cut it and I scuffed it when cutting it. But if I place this over the capacitor, you will see that our capacitance actually increases. Uh, and that's expected because everything has a higher uh, permittivity than air, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little paper towel that I've soaked in water. 
and we're going to go over this piece of plexiglass and we're going to put drips of water on the plexiglass. And as we do this, we're going to see the capacitance slowly increase. Or we should see the capacitance slowly increase from where it was before. So we add in some water droplets and we should see the capacitance increase. And the increase isn't going to be a lot, but we can see that there is an increase, right? And that's what we're going for. And so obviously before, without the plexiglass, we're sitting around seven picofarads. With the plexiglass, we're sitting around eight. And now with the water, we're sitting around nine. And that's just demonstrating that the design actually does work as intended. And now I'm going to wipe off the water and we're going to see the capacitance go back down to where it was before we added the water of around eight. So now we're back down to around eight. And now if I take off the plexiglass, we're going to see that we go back down to around seven. So that's the function of the capacitor using internal pull up and down resistors on the Arduino Uno. All right, welcome back to the slideshow. So when you get here, you should have seen the video of me doing sort of the testing and the demonstration of the circuit. Now, here we're going to go over the data and the methodology that we used to calculate the circuit. And in the video, I talked a little bit about how we're using a different method than what we originally presented. And let's go over this method first. Uh, so the reason why we didn't use this didn't use a method we presented in the video originally is because our capacitance was actually so small that we couldn't realistically get a resistor large enough to measure a change in the decay. And and we tried things up to, I think I had a four mega ohm resistor. And, and even then the change in delay was about 10 microseconds, which is definitely within margin of error because the analog read itself takes about three or four millis microseconds. So we definitely needed to come up with a different solution. And when we decided to come up with a solution that uses the internal pull up and uh, resistors and capacitors inside the actual chip on the Arduino. And this is something I mentioned earlier is it's something that the chip has that we don't have to worry about, but maybe if we were to design this in the future, this wouldn't be a luxury that we'd have and we'd have to include this or design around this deficit. And the graph earlier, it was taken from the data sheet from the 328. Now we have set pin two to high in this case. So we're going to be measuring on pin zero and you can see A2 and A0 correspond to analog pins two and zero. And we have capacitor for C sensor, which is going to be the little sensor that we have, and C pin, which is from the diagram before, the capacitor that's internally pulling up. And we set pin two to be five volts for a period of time, and then we can measure the voltage on pin zero continually. And so then we get this really nice measurement of current going through both pins, or not, sorry, not both pins, both capacitors, and then we can measure sort of the voltage drops across the two pins, there we go, and we can get a capacitance value for the sensor. And so using this technique, we're able to measure a lot smaller capacitances, capacitances than we were before. So this is why we used this method. Um, nothing against using resistors and time decay. Okay, so now we build and test the sensor with response graphs. Note that these are uncalibrated sensor response graphs. So we have not collaborated the internal pull-up resistor or the pull-up capacitor. And we're going to talk a little bit about the sensitivity that we can get out of Arduino. Um, but again, without knowing the specifics on the, the resistor and the capacitor, and I'll talk more about this later, it's hard to be sure, certain about the sensitivity. But here we can have the data from the capacitor. The green line is sort of the average trend. So this will be from the last video you saw where we had the polycarbon over the capacitor and we were putting water droplets on using our tissue. So you can see at the start on the very left side, we have our base case of the capacitance. So this was just the bare capacitor. Then you see this little flat area of around 8.7 uh, picofarads. This is when we put on the polycarbonate plate. So the change in the dielectric increased the capacitance a bit. And then sort of in the middle right area, you can see the capacitance increasing as we added water droplets. And then on the very right side, we have sort of the part where we take off the polycarbonate and we take off the water and you can see sort of the graph decay and you can see sort of the distinct areas of differences in capacitance. And this is definitely something that's exciting to see, especially since uh, we were trying to measure it before using a time decay and it really wasn't working. And 
And we can see here, I've included errors. So I've gone through the data and I've, I've sort of looked at the averages for each section and we've included a, a percentage error bars for each section. And the part I want you to take note of is notice this climbing area here. The maximum possible value we have when we're in our base case is something around looking at the middle left area around, let's just say nine picofarads, right? And if we use some filtering, we could definitely get this to be a lot more smoother and a lot con more consistent, but around nine picofarads. And then we go up to about 10 picofarads being submerged like completely underwater. And it doesn't seem like a really big change, but I think we're able to measure that change if we have a more calibrated sensor. And if we sort of use a few different various methods, we're able to actually extrapolate a lot of fine granular detail from that range. So we can expect the sensor to be able to output maybe three or four or five different states in in terms of we're in dry conditions, we're in sort of wet conditions, we're in mildly wet conditions, and we're in very wet conditions, right? Um, and that's always great to see. And obviously we could probably tune the sensor itself to show more change capacitance since this is a very unoptimized version of the sensor. Um, okay. One thing I wanted to point out here before I left is if you recall from the very first video I showed, putting the container of water with a very thin plastic base over the capacitor only yielded about at most 11 picofarads of capacitance, and that was at a very peaks. More consistently, is around 10.2 picofarads. And note here that even with a polycarbonate layer, so with one or two millimeters less water, we're still getting almost all the way to that full capacitance value, which is also something that's really good to see, and it means that our capacitor is working well and well, it's being sensitive to changes in the water, um, exactly where we want it to be. And it's also nice to see that we can have smooth areas. So now I'm going to take out the outliers. It makes the graph a little bit easier to look at. I obviously haven't taken out all of them. I just took out the big spikes. And we have a few distinct areas that I talked about earlier. So on the bottom, we have the capacitor capacitance in just free air on top of my desk. Uh, this is, we've seen this many times, it's around 7.5 or 7.7, 7.6 picofarads. We have the resting capacitance with polycarbonate. I'm using sort of like a more upper weighted average, um, but it could very well be around 8.75 to 9 picofarads. And then we can see here, we have the capacitance increasing from water droplets, and we have our peak capacitance somewhere around 10 picofarads, which is wonderful to see. And that like 10 picofarads with, with the polycarbonate. Okay. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at the response graphs and we've taken a look at the sensitivity that we can hope to achieve, uh, I want to talk about some future considerations that we have for the sensor. So the first one is the calibration of the sensor and the internal like resistors and capacitors. Uh, I tried to tune these. I, I tried to sort of use known capacitance values and to tune. Unfortunately, um, we never got it to work in a way where it would work across the board for many different capacitor values. We found that if you started tuning it for one capacitor, it would it would probably actually go out of tune for another capacitor. So we left it at a value that we seemed reasonable for all the capacitors that didn't have too much adverse effect on the readings. And um, that's the best that we could do under these situations. But in the future, it's something definitely to consider and work on. The next thing we wanted to take a look at is sort of this wider contact area. So you'll see in the videos a lot of times that we're struggling to put water droplets on the actual polycarbonate. It's just because it's so small. So in the future, if I was to redesign it, I would probably make the entire PCB wider. Uh, now, it was small this time by design, so that it would be sort of faster to ship, so that it would be easier to work with, so that it could be like, uh, you know, we could we could like work with it, we could integrate it into different designs, but I would like eventually in the end to make have made it larger. Um, now, one thing you'll have also noticed during the videos is we're playing with water over open electronics and there's a lot of water dripping around. So in the future, it would be really important to make sure that it's actually waterproof, especially since it's designed to measure water. So there's that. And then the last thing that I'm presently surprised pleasantly surprised, oh my gosh, to talk to you about is um, that we don't have to worry about response times. So if you go all the way back to when we talked about sort of our target response times, we mentioned something around 60 seconds to respond to input changes. Now you'll notice in the videos that it definitely didn't take 60 seconds to respond. It was almost instantaneous a response that we could get from, from our circuit, which is partly due to the change in design of the circuit, but also um, just really incredible. And we we have met our timing goal and and that's 
pretty much all there is to it. We can get near instantaneous or quarter second response times from changes in capacitance, and we can measure capacitance sensitivity down to about 0.1 picofarads, which is just actually amazing. So thank you so much for listening to me talk about my project. Have a picture with all of our components in it. And it was a lot of fun to work on this project. It was really fun to explore a different style of uh, capacitance and something that was sort of maybe a little bit more out there. And I hope it, you can receive this well. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for listening. Um, goodbye.